my two fellow Panderites eventually tired of the whole game um, and I became addicted. And along the way, we've put out early and pivotal singles by the likes of Coldplay, Keen, Embrace, Idle Wild. Embrace, Embrace and Idle Wild and Coldplay and Keen and dozens more. And now we get to the point where we've been going for so long that we struggle to remember which bands we've actually done and which bands we haven't done. And every now and again, I read online that we did actually do bands we never did. We did Radiohead, so, right? Apparently, I was actually quoted as saying that we this is the best thing we've signed since Radiohead the other day. It's the uh, the internet. It's a powerful tool of hardcore information. Uh, Travis, apparently, people think we've done Travis as well. Stereophonics. Well, you actually, we did do Stereophonics. We did a Welsh compilation which did Hoover up all the Welsh bands apart from Super Fairy Animals, who we had on Manics. another EP. So basically, yes, there are about three bands from that era that we didn't actually do. My name is Simon Williams and I run Fierce Panda Records and I co-run Club Fandango. My name's Martin Boyle, I'm a booker for Club Fandango. I've also got my own imprint called Giant Haystacks and they also do a and work for Panda. Well Fierce Panda started in 1994 um, at the boom time for alternative music. Not necessarily alternative music but in terms of the cultural setup. Um, back in 94, Britpop was about to happen, i.e. the good bands were making their presence felt and, um, and you couldn't move for labels putting out 17 singles. So when we first started, um, we put a record out called Shagging in the Streets, which was um, a celebration of a scene called the New Wave of New Wave and involved some punk bands who uh, not many people remember nowadays. They were called Smash and These Animal Men and bands like that. And it was very exciting for us. And the idea, the idea was that for all, for all the fun that was to be had with putting out records, we um, always thought that that would just be the only release we'd ever do because we were three journalists from the enemy, um, which isn't a tremendously cool way of existing and certainly not when you're trying to run a cool record company. Um, and because we only thought we'd ever do one single, that's why Fierce Panda was called Fierce Panda because we thought it doesn't really matter. It's not like we're still going to be around in 18 years' time being cursed with a name like Fierce Panda. It sounds like you, you've got quite a healthy thing going on, so do you think on a, a sort of cottage industry level, things are still really healthy and it's only kind of on the next level up that there's a, there's a, a huge problem? If you've never sold loads and loads of records, then you know, what we're experiencing at the moment isn't too much of a catastrophe. I mean, the majors had a, a crazy few years where every band beginning with a K could seemingly sell three million albums, like Keen and Kaiser Chiefs and The Killers and Coldplay. You know, I mean, they sold a phenomenal amount, and the bottom has absolutely dropped out of that. You know, I mean, they're probably they're probably down to a third of those sales. That's a tremendous amount of money that they're missing out on. On our level, you know, it's not so painful, but it's, it's still a huge drop um, from the height of. Fierce Panda's so-called legendary days when you could do, you know, a thousand seven inches and a thousand CD singles by a new band and get them in the top 75. You know, nowadays you're looking at, you know, you're going to sell 257 inches through retail and then it's up to the band themselves to take the other 250 singles on the road with them and you're still, it's still maximum at 500. So there's no money to be made from it whatsoever. Um, but the machine's still the same and the enthusiasm's still the same. I think the key to it is just not thinking about it. Because if you actually sat in the music industry in your office or in the, in the Club Fandango and actually thought about the way the industry's going, you, you, you just walk out of it straight away. You know, because it is, it's, it is an appalling mess. For as much as people moan about downloads, iTunes has been brilliant for Fierce Panda because it just monetizes stuff that you, you don't see in the shops anymore. It's basically one enormous HMV and you can get anything you want. Um, other than that, everyone's doing the same thing, aren't they? I mean, the thing that I noticed originally when in the world of downloads, when they became chart eligible, was that it was going to be a defining moment and it was going to be a level playing field for everyone. And now, you know, if you're an indie band not signed to a major and you had a bit of a fan base, you could get in the top 40. And it, it happened a couple of times. Um, and I saw you know, bands that no one had ever heard of appearing at number 36 in the charts. But then you'd look at their next gig and they were playing their local venues in front of about 200 people and their London venue wasn't even like to 50 people. So it wasn't real. And what we noticed in terms of Fierce Panda was that 
in the days when you were putting out two formats, the seven inch and the CD, a lot of the records would get in the top 100, which it might not sound, you know, big cheese nowadays, but you know, when Coldplay went at 99, they were overjoyed. Um, we got Art Brute up to 41. We missed the charts by two places. And I think that was probably the last time we actually bothered, because after that, once the downloads kicked in, we couldn't get in the top 200. Um, because, you know, numbers 100 to 200 are full up of Snow Patrol records and Kasabian records, you know, all those hits that people just, you know, there's someone out there who still needs to buy a copy of Chasing Cars once a week. And in fact, there's about 920 of those people and they keep our records out of the top 200. You know, and you've got a nice merch board and you've got to take that, your sort of list of email addresses, you know, and you've got to take your little rubber bracelet you know, with your band website on that you give.